The 2016-2017 Triumph Scrambler The Scrambler market is enjoying something of a boom with everybody and his uncle jumping on the bandwagon in recent years. Unlike many of these Johnny-come-lately manufacturers, Triumph had been quietly producing their modern version of the classic Scrambler concept, in the form of the aptly named Triumph Scrambler, since 2006 and continued up until 2017 when air cooling gave way to liquid. This favorite day tripper by rough and tumble folks like Steve McQueen runs a fuel-injected engine in typical Triumph fashion with 865cc parallel twin. Continue reading for my review of the Triumph Scrambler. Design 1964 Triumph Desert Sled TR6 The design similarities between this modern scrambler and its predecessor from 1956 are too strong to ignore. Also unlike many of the competitors jumping into the fray, Triumph has its own long-running history to draw upon for inspiration and design characteristics. The Scrambler should be viewed as a continuation of the natural evolution of the brand, not as a reactionary offering by an upstart company looking to capitalize on the resurgent classic bike market. No offense intended to said upstarts, of course. The market pressure and progressive styling they bring to the table ultimately benefits the consumer, and helps to bridge the gap between classic and contemporary designs. As much fun as it would be to full-on compare the 2017 Scrambler against its predecessor from 1956, the TR6 Trophy Desert Sled, I feel like the design similarities are too strong to ignore, and so I want to at least touch on them here. Look at the two side by side, and you will see that this acorn didn't fall far from the tree. The new Scrambler carries the same blackout fork lowers, bellows fork gaiters and semi-knobby tires as the Desert Sled. Besides the loss of the tank rack, the new Scrambler carries a near-identical tank complete with knee indentations, rubber knee pads, and on the two-tone version, the same swoop a dupe paint job that accentuates the knee recesses. Okay sure, the straight-back exhaust pipes and disc brakes give the Scrambler away, but even Ray Charles could see the similarities between the two. Personally, I really like the exhaust design, it seems to look fast even when sitting still, and for some reason my earworm is playing the theme song from the Speed Racer cartoon. The rest of the ride just exudes that whole, decidedly British Triumph vibe, with undeniable genetic links to one of the great, classic scrambler bikes from back in the day. Chassis the semi-nobby tread is a good balance between dirt and street capability, but you have to understand that it's a compromise that makes the tire something of a jack-of-all, master of none. Trumpet was going for a classic look with this ride, so it stands to reason that they would start with a traditional-looking, double downtube, double cradle frame made of steel tubing for the bones with a skid plate to protect the engine cases. The tubular steel swing arm makes no effort to reduce unsprung weight at the rear wheel, but instead focuses on strength and classic design. Laced rims are always a nice touch in my opinion, and the spoked 19-inch front and 17-inch rear wheels look just right and add a bit of give to the system for added off-road comfort. Semi-knobby tires complete the rolling chassis, and though the tread is a good balance between dirt and street capability, you have to understand that it's a compromise that makes the tire something of a jack-of-all, master of none. The factory tapped Kayaba for the suspension components, and slapped some of its stiff 41mm inverted forks on the front, with a pair of its chromed coil-over shocks in back. While the front forks come with fixed performance parameters, the rear shocks at least come with an adjustable preload function. Wheel travel is typical for the Scrambler class at 4.72 inches of travel up front, and 4.17 inches in the rear, sufficient for casual off-road work, but you can go ahead and forget about setting any new high jump records on it. At around a quarter ton wet, the Scrambler isn't a lot of bike to have to keep under control, so Triumph gets a pass on the lack of dual binders up front. The twin piston front caliper pinches a 310mm disc, while another twin pot caliper binds the 255mm rear disc. Trumpet doesn't offer anything in the way of abs or linked brakes for the scrambler, an omission I count as a point in its favor. Drivetrain Power output is modest, but geared toward the needs of on- and off-road Shinani Gannery. Much like the Desert Sled, the Scrambler comes with the typical parallel twin mill so prevalent among Triumphs through the ages. 
The factory stuck to its guns on looks and went with air cooling for the engine rather than clutter the bike up with a water jacket and big radiator that came in the next incarnation with the street scrambler, but hedged its bet by adding another layer of engine protection in the form of an oil cooler between the downtubes. This isn't the twingle layout from years past, but runs with a 270 degree offset to the crank that gives it an off-balance firing order, a handy thing to have when you head off-road or decide to tackle some hills. The over-square, short-stroke engine sweeps 68 mm of the 90 mm bore, for a total displacement of 865 cc. Power output is modest, but geared toward the needs of on- and off-road Shinani Gannery with 59 ponies at 6,800 revolutions per minute and 50.15 pound-feet of torque at 4,750 revolutions per minute. One of my favorite details of the engine has to do with the throttle bodies. Trumpet designed the throttle bodies to look like one of the old constant velocity CV carburetors, a step that no doubt cost bundles in research and development, but it really adds to the whole old, new charm. A sturdy, 5-speed gearbox handles the transmixer duties via wet clutch, and a chain final drive completes the drivetrain. Now, if the trumpet designers really wanted to get a little crazy, they could have stuck a Kickstarter on there and just put it over the top. The advent of fuel injection and super smart engine controls makes kicking a viable option again, and even if you never need it, it just looks really cool. Price The two-tone Diablo Red and Lunar Silver colorway creates the strongest tie to the past of all three palettes with more than a passing resemblance to the Desert Sled's two-tone paint scheme. Triumph offers the Scrambler in three different sheet metal colors and three different prices. The jet black model will set you back $9,400, while the nearly black matte Pacific blue goes for a cool $9,650. Two-tone, Diablo Red and Lunar Silver makes up the premium paint package, and it creates the strongest tie to the past of all three palettes with more than a passing resemblance to the Desert Sled's two-tone paint scheme. Competitor both factories took similar routes in the old as new category, and the finished products do more than hint at models popular during the scrambler heyday between 1960 and the mid-1970s. The Scrambler Classic from Ducati combines design elements from Duke's own history with a progressive mindset for its own blend of old as new in the scrambler category. Both factories took similar routes in this respect, and the finished products do more than hint at models popular during the scrambler heyday between 1960 and the mid-70s. Duck takes a more progressive tack with a boomerang swing arm and single monoshock tucked up under the seat at a jaunty angle, but the dark brown tanned leather seat looks as classic and old school as anything else out there. Engine displacement is comparable with the duck falling a little shy at 803 cc, a full 62 cc short of the trumpet. Italian engineering carries the day once all the numbers are in, and in spite of the smaller size, the L-twin, Desmodromic mill cranks out 75 horsepower to the Triumph's 59, and torque falls out the same at 50 pound-feet. You will pay for that extra little bit of Italian engine yummy goodness in the end, though. The Duck Classic rolls for $10.495, over a grand higher than the Trumpet in basic black. In the end, you have to ask yourself if you want to pay for a little more power, whether you prefer a faithful classic or if a modern tribute is enough to slake your historical thirst. He said. When first I laid my eyes upon the Trumpet Scrambler, I thought, I feel like I already know this bike. I even dragged my wife, Alan, over to see if she could help me remember what this bike looked like. When I pulled out the pics of the desert sled, the resemblance was uncanny. I have to give Triumph props here, it made a bike that almost had me thinking it could be a straight up resurrection ride, something I am still waiting for. She said. My wife and fellow rider, Alan Hinton, says, this does look like about every old Triumph, but that's not really a bad thing. It has styling that is really timeless. When I was a teenager, scramblers were on the way out, but like the hula hoop and platform shoes, it all comes back into favor. The Triumph Scrambler is a fun, smooth ride with a nice upright seating position. Specifications References Ducati Scrambler Classic See our review of the Ducati Scrambler Classic to Art 165652. Triumph Street Scrambler
See our review of the Triumph Street Scrambler. If you liked this video, please share your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to hit the subscribe button.